What I'm showing you right here is a 3D print I'd made of my initials, the letter T and the letter B, and it has this kind of three-dimensional, depending on what view you look at it, kind of effect to it. And the reason I'm talking about this is I recently got a 3D printer. So I'm going to show you how to make this, which I've already done, but we're going to do it procedurally this time. So you can pick any two letters and automatically just boom, we got a model. And I'm going to show you the process of how I might 3D print something like this now that I have a 3D printer. And if you don't have a printer yourself, do not worry because I'm going to take like 10 people who send me an email at this email address. And uh, if you give me your initials, I can print one for you if you cover the cost of the thing plus the cost of shipping. Either way, uh, let's get into the tutorial. Let me get comfy. So here's the template I made. You can see it's basically the same thing I was describing, the letter Z, the letter B, and you can swap those for any two letters. Like let's say you're, you're picking rice gum so that's the letter R the letter G and you can see automatically we have R and G and it works uh, procedurally uh, because I added a bunch of nodes and I'm gonna show you how to do that either way you know what you're what we're covering today and I've stuttered enough let's just go for it so uh, when you have Blender open, I'm just going to open up geometry nodes. I would recommend getting one of the newer builds, at least have like 3.1 uh, so that you have some of the newer nodes like extrusion, like merge, etc. What I want to do is I want to take this cube and apply geometry nodes. Why? Uh, because it's a geometry nodes tutorial. Uh, but procedurally, what we want is we want to be able to pick two letters give those two things thickness and then the way uh, that we get this kind of morph model is we kind of boolean intersect them together after repositioning them in other words we have some work to do first thing we need to do is let's pick a letter uh, i'm going to use this using a string to curves node so whatever letter we pick like the letter r and i'm going to use capitals it's going to turn it into an actual curve object that we can see so here is a curve and you could technically do this with a couple letters but uh, to outsource this i'm going to use a string not a slice string but a string node so that i can pick this right here because ultimately again we're turning this into a node group so i want to expose my parameters after we have this and we'll do the second letter in a bit what i want to do is give this letter thickness as i was describing it so right now it's a curve we need to turn it into geometry so let's fill in that curve now it's geometry and then to give it thickness you might think okay let's do an extrude mesh um and that, you know, it does work, but it is missing an element, uh, which is the bottom side. So you can see it's extruding it. It's giving it a an arbitrary amount of thickness, uh, but it's not a sealed mesh. And it's important that it is a sealed mesh because for booleans to work, you need two manifold closed things. Um, so the way we kind of cover both caps is I'm just going to join these together. So you can see I've taken the original, the other one, and just kind of pasted them together. And then finally... Even though it looks like a sealed mesh, it's actually just two objects joined together. Uh, we need to merge by distance so that if any two vertices are within a tiny, tiny threshold apart, in other words, the ones that are the same, merge them, make them the same thing. Okay, so there we have the letter A. Now, I guess one more thing we should do before we Boolean is if you look at the um, data of this right here, you can see it's actually just a bunch of instances. It's two because of the join geometry, this, that. Uh, when we boolean, we need actual geometry data, so make sure you realize instances, and it probably makes sense to do that uh, before everything else, so that we have uh, not two instances, but one that gets converted into a thing. Okay, what have I done here? Long story short, if you didn't understand any of that, is we have a letter, we can pick what it is, the letter C, the letter R, the letter Q. It's going to turn it into a curve, into a mesh, and then it's going to extrude it and seal it and make it a closed thing, Okay. Uh, this is so useful that we can take all of this and hit control G and make that a node group. If I now have two of these, so this is the great thing about node groups. If I have two of them, by the way, if I didn't say control G is the hotkey, uh, now that I have two of them, as I've said for the thousandth time, I can now just input manually uh, what I want. So here's the letter A, here's the letter B, and uh, you can see we can swap those out at any time. Okay, next order of business is they are both kind of in the same space, kind of pointing upwards. Uh, what I want to do is I want to rotate them so that they're facing the right way and also center them somehow. And I'll show you a cool trick for that. And then we can do the intersecting. So starting off with rotation, I'm just going to use a transform node. I want to rotate this so it's kind of on the XY plane sitting on it. Fine. And then for the other one, same thing but I'm going to rotate it by 90 degrees on the Z axis. Again, uh, we want it so that they're perpendicular to each other so that we can do the intersection. So here's one, 
and two. You can see they're not actually going to intersect because they're not in the right position, which we'll take care of, okay? So now that they're oriented correctly, to get this in the right position, uh, normally what I'd do is I'd calculate the center position of this and shift it over, uh, which we do by looking at the attribute of position and this, this, that. Now I read a cool YouTube comment that showed me a trick that I didn't consider about how to calculate the center of this so that we could shift it, whatever. Um, let me show you what that was. So what the guy or girl said is uh, use the bounding box. A uh, bounding box is a node that's just gonna give us the limits on the X, Y, and Z of our mesh. And we can use this to calculate the center because it's only eight points, which is simpler than the other thing. The center of the bounding box should roughly be the center of this in terms of center of volume. Um, so if we can calculate that and do a shift, then we're cool. Now you could use the uh, min and max. I haven't gotten it to work exactly uh, for some reason. I don't know why. Uh, maybe it's something to do with relative versus, you know, whatever uh, coordinate system. Uh, but here is what I've come up with. It's basically the same method, but it's a bit lighter since it's a bounding box. So we are going to calculate the attribute statistic. I want statistics about what attribute. I want to know about the position of the bounding box and then tell me the mean of it. Okay. So in other words, what I've done here is I said, tell me the average position. In other words, the center of this thing. If we now transform our mesh, not the bounding box, we're just using the bounding box to calculate stuff, right? Uh, but if we now, no rotation, transform the mesh based on, it won't be the mean that moves it the wrong way, but we need to do the negative of the mean. So let's take this, let's scale it by negative one. Uh, you could see this now centers the thing. And if it looks like I just put in random notes, again, let me explain. Uh, we have this, it's off center. I need to know what the center of it is so I can shift it back this way, right? To do that, I did a bounding box, which should have roughly the same center. Attribute statistic of the position gives me the mean, the average position. I scale it by negative one, so it's not moving it in this direction, but in the other way, okay? So it's gonna kind of offset, right? So in, instead of moving it to the origin, we wanna move the origin back to the 3D cursor or the world origin. Either way, regardless of whether or not you understood it, uh, the important thing is this uh, little node group that we created, or we're about to make it a node group, uh, does the centering. And it keeps the orientation. So I'm gonna turn that into a group. In fact, I probably want to uh, connect those so it's only one output. Why, do, why does this keep having multiple outputs? There, so like that, Control G. There we go, it's getting frustrated. Uh, so this is our centering group. So now it's applied to the second one. And you can see before, after. And then for this one, before, after. So it centers them. And now when we join these, you can see they're perfectly overlapping. Yay. Okay, so final thing uh, we need to do here is now that they're extruded, uh, we can swap out the letters at any time, as I keep saying, and they're overlapping. Uh, we just need to use the uh, mesh boolean instead of joining them. So what does that mean? And again, this is the merging process we're gonna to use to create the, the 3D print. If we use a mesh boolean, set it to intersection, connect this one and connect this one and view it, you can see, wow, it magically does the thing. Cause of course it would. If you look at it from this side, it's gonna show uh, the letter B cause it had that component originally there and we're intersecting, which means use both. Um, but you, you can tell what this does. It's kind of a cool little generator. Uh, one thing that I find interesting is you can use the same letter from two perspectives. So if I use two letter Cs, it looks like a C from here and from here. Uh, but this is kind of like the three dimensional version of the letter C, uh, which I find pretty strange. Maybe I'll make a video about that. Uh, so let's go back to the letter A and the letter B, which we can now again swap out. And let's make a little pedestal for this, which we're just gonna model. So I'm gonna make a cube. I'm gonna scale it down, position it, take this, bevel, we're done. Uh, but I want it to be part of the geo nodes group, so it's entirely one geometry nodes project. So after we do the mesh boolean, I'm just gonna import it in using object info on the cube. This time we're joining. We don't need to uh, use mesh boolean for this, but you could do a union. And there is reason to do that, but I'm just gonna join geometry. And you can see, boom, we have the pedestal that should work for anything uh, because all the letters based on the font are roughly the same size. So let's do I and J. Kind of gives a boring one, actually, that one. Uh, let's try K and P should be more interesting. There we go, P 
k. That's one of the core ones. Um, so let's say that we're happy with this. We like the letters. Let's let's just stick with like t and u. Okay, so u and t. Pretty cool. Uh, if we're happy with this, all we need to do is uh, apply the geometry nodes. Because again, it is procedural, but once we're ready, uh, we apply geometry nodes, so it's one mesh. And now let's get this 3D printing. Uh, really, the only thing we need to do here is you could check topology and all this, but because of the way we generated this, I'm pretty sure it's airtight and we made a pedestal and all this. Uh, so the only thing I would recommend is making sure this thing is to the scale that you like. Uh, to do this, I'm going to go to the scene units and let's go to something. I know we usually use metric, uh, but just so I can visualize this, right? We want this to 3D print to a real thing. I'm going to go to inches. And now in the real scale, if I was to print this, it'd be like 32 by 32 by 30 inches. It'd be huge. I want it to be not even this big, smaller, like let's say two inches across. Um, all we'd have to do is scale it down until one of the major axes is two units. And there are add-ons like the 3D print add-on that will let us do this automatically. Uh, but assuming you don't have that add-on, I'm just not going to assume that you have it. So I'm going to scale it down. This is roughly two by two by two inches. You take it, you apply scale. And now if we were to print this, it would be an object of roughly two inches cubed. By the way, if you do have the add-on, just so you guys know, what you can do is in the 3D print, you go to transform, you go to bounds, you say make it two inches maximum, and it will scale it roughly to the same thing we had before. Although this time it's going to be exact on one of the major axes. Uh, either way, once you're happy with this, what you need to do is export it in a format that's compatible with a slicer program. Uh, what a slicer program does is it takes this mesh we created and makes it, uh, turns it into instructions for the 3D printer. Um, and those tend to accept usually a bunch of file types, but it seems like they like STL, OBJ, and one of these. So I'm going to say, let's just export it as an STL. So with the thing selected, go to File, go to Export, go to STL, and I'm going to call this one Letter. Apply modifiers, all this, fine. Um, and now let's open up our slicing program. Okay, so for the slicing program, we are using Ultimaker Cura because that's the one that I heard about in a YouTube tutorial, so I'm just spreading the word. It's free, download it. Uh, it's available for Mac, Windows, Linux, whatever. And once you have it installed, just one thing you have to do, just select the 3D printer you're using. In my case, I have an Ender 3. It's gonna prompt you to pick a 3D printer. So assuming you've already done this, here is how we get this thing sliced and ready to print. First of all, import in your thing. So for me, uh, I, it's the same file, but I just wanna let you know during the cut, I did two things. Uh, one, I applied scale, uh, which I showed you how to do, but since we use the uh, 3D print plugin or add-on, I'm like, oh, I need to apply scale. I forgot to do that. And second of all, I deleted that pedestal that we imported into geometry nodes using join geometry, right? So it's there. I don't need a second mesh for that. Uh, but either way, that that's the file. So we import it in. You can see it looks exactly the way that we created it. Um, again, we could have procedurally made it anything. And uh, just so you know, to navigate, pretty simple. Mouse wheel to scroll, or scroll the, scroll the mouse wheel to zoom in and out. Click it to do this, and then right click to orbit. Um, once you have this imported, all we need to do is, let's not open that, all you have to do is click slice. And it's gonna calculate some stuff. It's gonna say, oh, it's gonna take two hours and 20 minutes at whatever settings we picked, and that's that. Uh, but it kind of looks like it did nothing. So let me explain what went on over here. Once you sliced, you can head over to preview. This is gonna show the actual data. So you can actually see the slices that it's creating as we uh, print this from uh, bottom to top. And you can see once we go into the pedestal, we actually get this frame, so it's not wasting uh, filament. Uh, so it's actually creating a list of instructions of how to print this thing, and you can actually preview what that looks like. And uh, with these instructions, uh, it's such that it would take two hours and 20 minutes. If you go to the settings and make it kind of a higher detail, it's almost like voxel size, the smaller this number, I imagine, the higher the detail. So now we slice again. And now the same thing, which was two hours and uh, whatever, 20 minutes is now three hours. And I think this was 260 layers, now it's 393. Um, so you can see how uh, this affects stuff. And you can add support and adhesion. This isn't a 3D printing tutorial. Uh, but what I would do for this at two inches is I'd probably pick the default settings. I'd slice it. Um, and uh, yeah, I'd be, I'd be happy with that. And let's see. 
Yeah. Uh, so once once you're ready, uh, just take it and export this out. So save to disk uh, as a G code file. You send it to your Ender 3 or whatever 3D printer, and then you print it. So that is that. And again, I know not everybody has a 3D printer. So if you want your initials or whatever two letters you want, B, S, A, D, whatever, um, just email me here. I can uh, print out a couple, find a way to uh, send them. Make sure you're in the U.S. so it's, you know, kind of simple. I mean, I imagine the thing is lightweight, wouldn't cost much, but I'll give you a price uh, if you want to do it. And uh, other than that, Patreon, as I talk about at the end of these tutorials. So uh, if you want to contribute to this channel and CG Matter, the best way to directly fund is via Patreon. Link in the description. Uh, you get three things in return. One, you get early access to tutorials. You could have seen this before other people. The people who comment and you're like, how did they comment the day, two days before? That's how. Second of all, you get um, blend files. So this procedural letter generator. You don't need to make it yourself. I'm going to upload it. You can download it and just use it. And then thirdly, you get um, exclusive tutorials. Almost forgot about that one. I don't make them too frequently because I try to keep everything for free. Uh, but yes, like once a month, every once in a while, I make a tutorial that's only behind a paywall. It's only for patrons. So either way, if you're interested in any of that, uh, you know what to do. Link in the description. And thank you for watching.